either the things that are in the world. If any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Father shall abide forever. Of course, God's word is very clear in regards to loving the world. If you look at the Bible in James 4 verse 4, it says that he that loves the world is enemy, is the enemy of God. Um, those who love the world can never be friends with God. So a big question to you, um, what's in your heart in regards to the love of the world? Are you loving the world? Are you attached to the world? Or you are attached to God? Of course, that's a big question for you. And um, we pray for you that God will help, help you, God will strengthen you, God will uphold you and make your heart steadfast in Him. I trust you're doing greatly. I trust that God is helping you. I trust that God is teaching you on a daily basis. Um, we trust God to always help you and um, keep you and make you strong in the mighty name of Jesus. To share the word of God today in the house is our dearly beloved pastor, Pastor Adibi Adiwale. He's the pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Region 1, Province 1. And he's right here to bless us today. It's so good to have you here, sir. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Brother Tokumba. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Thank you for taking time out. Thank you, sir. A teaching comes at a cost. Exactly. For does. people who really understand what it means. Oh, bless God. Yes, yeah, sir. So, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. We'll just have a short word of prayer as we proceed with the program. Yes, sir. Father, we want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify your name. We worship and we adore you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because of your grace that you have made sufficiently available unto us. Thank you, Thank Father. you for today. Thank, thank you because Lord. it's the day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Yes, Lord, we ask as we go into your word this morning, please, Lord, visit us in a new way in the name of Jesus. Amen. In a new dimension in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let every heart that hears this word this morning, let their lives never remain the same again. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you one more time, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please connect with us on our social media platforms on Twitter at Dove TV, like us on Facebook, Dove Television, and also visit our website on www.dovevision.org. You can also join, it, join, us via the um, join us in this conversation via Twitter by using the hashtag Springs of Life. Hashtag Springs of Life. Yeah, the topic before us today says, build on the rock. Build on the rock. We trust God to do a quick work in our hearts. We implore you to pay rapt attention um, so that God can minister to you today. So build on the rock. We'll start with the definitions. Yes, sir. Oh, um, the, as, yes, all right. Thank you, Brother Tokumbo. Um, actually, uh, build on the rock for the word build, as it were. We know it's more like um, erecting a structure. It could be a structure, it could be a thing, it could be anything that has the capacity of standing. Okay. You know, because what makes um, building to be complete is when it's visible, that people can see that from the ground level is built up. Okay. Now, the rock as it were, you know, so that we don't go too much into geology as it were, but the rock as it were signifies Jesus himself. Okay. You know, building our lives on the foundation that is Jesus. Mm. And um, when we do that, we know that um, evidently whatever that is built on the rock would always last. It's not something that is ephemeral. It's not something that it's for a little time. It's not something that people can see and overlook. It's something that is so prestigious, something that is so solid, something that is built on him that is termed to be everlasting. So the, the, the way we're going to be taking it this morning has to do with we as Christians okay. building our lives on him and actually encouraging the people out there that their lives are not yet built on the rock for them to have this opportunity to have their lives built on the rock and not on the sand in which when there is flood, when there is rain, when there is affairs of life, when there is discouragement, it is quickly swept away. So we are okay. talking about built on the rock this oh. morning. All right. Thank you very much, sir. What's the essence? Sir. Why should I build on the rock? 
Okay. Now, let, let's just go to the scriptures right away okay. so that we can actually answer that question very well. All right. Now, the Bible talks about this in Luke chapter 6. I will read from verse 47 to 49. Luke 6. Luke chapter 6, verse 47 to 49. 47 I will read from the okay. Amplified Version. All right. Sir. Now, the Bible says from that verse 46, it says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not practice what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and listens to my words and obeys them, I will show you whom he is like. That's Jesus talking there. Okay. He's like a far-sighted, practical, and a sensible man. Okay. Building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. Okay. Then, and when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against that house and yet could not shake it because it had been securely built and founded on the rock. Okay. But the one who has merely had and has not practiced what I say, Jesus still talking there, is like a foolish man who built a house on the ground without any foundation, and the torrent burst against it, and it immediately collapsed, and the ruin of that house was great. Now, if we look mm. at these scriptures very well, to answer what you have asked, sir, there are two people in this situation. Okay. Both of them were doing the same thing. They had similarities. One was building, the second one was building. This was irrespective of the number of story building they were building. It okay. was just a building. But anyone that takes time to build must have it at the back of his mind that he wants what is building to last. Now, what determines how that building will last is dependent on the foundation in which that house is built upon. Okay. One of them built on the rock. Another one built on the sand. And the Bible talked about, in, in the Bible gave us an, a, you know, a, a, a little detail of these two type of people. The okay. first one said it was, it was a far-sighted, practical, and a sensible man. That means somebody that is sensible, according to that amplified version, is somebody that will think it wise to build on the rock. Why? Because he wants all that he has built over his life, all mm. that he has invested upon to last forever. The other person built on the sand. Now, when somebody builds on the sand, definitely that is not enough foundation. Okay. And when the rain comes, when the flood comes, when things come, they can easily sweep that kind of a house away. So the essence of this message is for us to encourage the people outside there to have an idea of what the foundation that has to do with Jesus is like so that mm. they will have a rethink of how they are meant to build their lives and what they are meant to build their lives on. Now, mm -hmm. for people, we are Christians. Definitely, we know that Christianity is not a bed of roses. At some point in time in our lives, we have challenges. Some, uh, sometimes challenges uh, makes us stronger. Uh, the truth is, what you are saying yes. right now is something we hardly hear about in churches today. Exactly. I mean, I'm, I mean this is scarce to come by. Mm. That, that's because challenges I'm, of Christians. I'm, I'm talking right now as a Christian. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. yes please. Yes. Yeah, challenges are meant to come. Now, people always ask God for miracles. But do you know sometimes that for you to have some miracles, you need to go through some challenges? Mm. Now, Jesus Christ did not even promise the disciples bed of roses. He didn't tell mm. them everything will go on smoothly. Mm. As a matter of fact, they went through a lot of things. But it was actually to make them better off. You know, the afflictions they went through was actually to bring out the best out of them. So somebody that built on the rock in that kind of a situation, he could have challenges. But the fact that the house is standing well on that rock, no matter what comes his way or our way, will be a passing face and not a permanent one. Mm. The challenges will come, the tribulations will come. But the fact that you are built on the rock, you are secured, there is a level of stability that you have. You cannot be moved. According to the scriptures, the Bible says that the house was not even shaking at all. That's mm. to tell you that it can never fall. Why? Because the foundation, the rock, is Jesus Christ himself. Mm. Everyone, inclusive Christians and um, you know, believers and non-believers, they have challenges, just like I said. Yes. But what makes you stand in the time of test is dependent on what your life is built upon. Built upon. Exactly. So you talked about believers and unbelievers yes. alike. Now we have, uh, this came to heart mm. when you started um, explaining. Um, firstly, building as, from, um, as a Christian. Now, from being an unbeliever to becoming a Christian a is a kind of, 
be um, a rock you build on. Yes. Then yes. being a Christian, we have like we could have like two kinds of Christians. Okay. The one who builds on the rock, mm -hmm. Jesus, mm -hmm. and the one who is careless about his faith. Mm. I don't know. That just came to heart. I don't know if you um, if we'll have time to talk about. That. I would love to. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Because somebody might be saying, "I'm born again. I'm built on the rock." But you talked about life challenges. Mm -hmm. And of course, as Christians, we are exposed to challenges. Mm -hmm. So do we also, could we also be swept away if we are not built solidly on the rock, Jesus? Okay, now that's yes, a very sir. good question. Now, the rock, as it were, we have said, we have laid that foundation that okay. that rock is Jesus. Okay. Now, whatever that is built on him can never crumble. Okay. Whatever that is built on him cannot be faulted. Mm. Whatever that is built on him will forever be stable. Mm. But even Jesus, while he was upon the surface of the earth, the savior of the world, there were many things that came his way. But the Bible says that we do not have an eye priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmity. Why? Because in all ways, he too was tested. He came, he felt all that we are meant to feel here on earth so that when we are going through some things and we call upon him, he will know to an extent what we are going through. So, in that wise, a Christian that is built on the rock would forever be standing. At some point in time, just like we have some people too that made mistakes in the scriptures, you know, okay. we can never be too careful, but Jesus Christ is always forgiven. At some mm -hmm. point in time in our lives, we could make mistakes. But Jesus Christ, the way he operates with us, the Bible says the arms of the Father was widely open, talking about the prodigal son, as he saw him afar off. Sometimes in our lives, when we see that we have done some things wrong, and we look at it as if our foundation is shaky, okay. we look like it seems we are disconnected from him. His hands are always widely open to receive us back. But that doesn't mean that, you remember the story of um, Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible says when he had that vision, he said what he had in that vision was that cut the tree but leave the stump. That means that tree was, it has the ability to grow again. Great, and man. for the number of years that he was in the forest as a beast of the field, nobody took his position. Nobody mm -hmm. sat on his throne. The reason why it was cut and it was not uprooted was because God himself also has a plan that he was going to come back to his senses and be reinstated. He came back. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar was one of the kings that gave God a lot of names in the scriptures. You know, when he came back to his senses, he began to tell God, Father, now I know that there is God in heaven. I know there is a God that sits to the affairs of men. I know. So God does not really want us to be swept away. So our mm -hmm. doing is sometimes, why? Because God knows our frame. Our doing sometimes does not mean that the rock that we are seated upon will be taken away from us. No. Okay. It remains our rock and is always willing. If we are willing to come back to him, he said, come now, let us reason together. Do your same may be as red as scarlet. He said, I will make them as white as snow. So when we know that we are bound or we make mistakes, we run back to him. But God will not, because of that, take away his stability in our lives, mm -hmm. even as Christians. Mm -hmm. for, but for the unbelievers, we always use this opportunity to tell them. Different things will come, challenges will come, but what you are built upon is what determines what happens to you when the challenges eventually comes. If you'll be swept away, or probably you will still remain standing. So like we read in that scripture, two of okay. them did similar things. But what made them different from each other was just the foundation which they built upon. Every Christian must know, evidently, that is built upon the rock. And when challenges come, like I said earlier, they are not meant to make us lose our grip of God. Because sometimes people look up to God and say, God, are you still there? God, can't you see me going through all this? Sometimes we pray a prayer of complaints, not even mm -hmm. a prayer like we are talking to our Father in heaven. So when people begin to talk like that, then they need to shake themselves as Christians. Am I actually still on this rock? Am I being built on the rock? Is my life being built on the rock? The things that are meant to come to sweep me away, are they heavier or are they more solid than the rock in which I'm built upon? You know, if, if we go geology-wise, you know, rock, as it were, is an aggregate of different minerals. Okay. And you know that, as it were, it's a very, very solid material that is meant to be built upon. You know, so the characteristics and the composition of that rock makes it possible to withstand a lot of things. 
weather, climate, you know, different challenges, and that is what we are meant to build our lives upon, mm. you know. And as time goes on, I will tell us what this rock also refers to. The rock, as it were, means the solid, it means strong, it means protection, it means security, it means we are immovable, we are firm, and that rock also is enduring and is everlasting. So why wouldn't we decide to build on something that is everlasting? Everlasting. Why would we decide to build on something that is just for a little time, that is ephemeral, that can disappear in no time when there is a problem to us? So as time goes on, I would like to just share some things that are worthy of note about the rock. All right. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Welcome, sir. While you were reading from the Amplified Version, yes. you, you said those who hear and practice. Yes. We'd we'll like you to talk about that. Okay. He yeah. said, let me just read it again. Okay. He said... Um, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not practice what I tell you? Okay. That's Jesus. Yeah. Because he's giving us instructions. You know, the, the Bible is there for us to read, to understand what he expects of us. Some of the things he communicated to the disciples and some of the things he wrote just for us to understand and for us to act based on that which he has said. You know, many of these things are based on conditions. You know why? Because the heaven does not waste its resources. Even though the heavens wants us to partake from every goodness, every blessing that comes from heaven. But there are some things that we are meant to fulfill as Christians. So he said, if you will have to, if you obey me, then you will be likened to a man that built his house on the rock. You know, so it was based on the fact that Jesus was given information, he was given instruction, and it was based on those instructions that he brought about the story of those two people. Somebody that hears me, understands me, that, um, that hears my voice and knows that this is Christ calling, you know, a sheep to a shepherd, and he understands all that I'm giving him as instruction, and he does it well, he does it well, then that is the person that has built on the rock. The mm. person that hears it also, Everybody hears it, but what what differentiates the people that hears are the people that wants to obey what he had, they have had, and the people oh, that had. says no, I have had it, but I'm not willing to you know go by it. So for the people that obey, he said they are the ones that their house is built on the rock, which is him himself. The people that hears it but do not obey, they are the ones that eventually falls into this problem. He said that house was built on the ground without any foundation. That means they are not built on Christ. And the torrent burst against it and immediately it collapsed. Why? Because it doesn't have any form of stability. So it's about we understanding and hearing him and obeying him. You know, obedience is very, very key in Christendom. Yeah. Obedience makes you to stand the test of time. At some point in time, the Bible talked about Abraham. And God spoke to him. He said, take your son, thy only son, the son of promise. Take him, that son of covenant. Take him and go and make him a sacrifice on Mount Moriah. Now, the Bible says that Abraham woke up early morning. Now, just to use as an example, somebody that built his house on the rock. He woke up early morning. Why? Because he, I believe he, he, should, he probably didn't even sleep overnight. Why? Because he wanted to obey what God, the instruction of God. And he took the boy, he went, the Bible says some other of his um, uh, people went with him. At a point in time, when he saw the Mount Moriah far off, he told the other people, he said, stay here, why I and the lad go yonder? They both went. Now, he must have stopped them because at some point in time, there are situations around you that could prompt you not to wanting to obey God or mm. probably to eat to some instructions of God. Why? Because you are the one that was spoken to directly. Are you getting my point now? So instruction, eating to God's instruction brings a bias. And he told him, God himself will provide the sacrifice. He was a man of faith. The Bible says the right thing is righteousness. It's, you know, he was so righteous to the extent that whatever God gave him as instruction at that point in time, he was ready to do Final. it. Final. It was the final thing. Why? Because he was a friend of God from the beginning of his life. And that tells of a man that built his house on the rock. He was not shaky. He, was, he didn't have two minds. He, he, he didn't, the Bible says a man that is unstable will not receive anything. In his mind will not receive anything of God. God. So when we trust God, we are meant to trust him 100%. You know, sometimes... So, okay, okay, yes. In summary, yeah. um, building on the rock is trusting God 100%. Exactly. Like and I just picked based, that, I just Yes, picked that trusting right God 100%, 100%. Based on all that he has spoken to you about. And the fact that you are willing 
to obey all that he every has instruction said. every instruction of how hard that instruction every is. instruction and now this um these thoughts were running in my heart okay um that's talking about there, there are several as aspects about this christian journey you're talking about um the financial aspect you're talking about the um faith aspect you're talking mm. about um dependence on God aspect, you're talking about health aspect. Mm. For example, um, someone might actually obey God when it comes to tithing, so on and so forth. But when it comes to health conditions, then you start have um, you start having um, yeah, some exactly. wavering yeah. and everything, or in certain aspect. Mm. Yes, that was just running through my so it's building on the rock is um, I, I believe um, Trusting God in every aspect of your life. Exactly. Uh, please, we'd like you to talk about that because there are several aspects. Somebody believes in God in this aspect, mm. but when it gets to this aspect, uh, because I've heard things like, oh, oh, talking about doctrines. Mm. Some people start to contest the doctrine of giving, mm -hmm. tithing, so on and so forth. Like I was hearing a renowned man of God talking about tithing and why it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. um, it shouldn't be imposed on you, so on and so forth, and all that. So we'd like you to talk about that. Okay, please. now, yes. you see... Um, when we refer to instructions that we get from God and the things that we are meant to do to please him alone and to making sure that we are firmly standing on the rock, there are no two ways about it. And one thing about God is that you cannot, you see, when it comes to God, when it comes to obedience, mm, it is 100%. 100 percent yes 100 okay. percent obedience you know the story of Saul. you know go and you know kill the amalekites and kill everything and he reserved some stuff and eventually even the king agag didn't even kill him and when samuel came you know the story and samuel was the one that killed king agag eventually which was the work that god had given the instruction express instruction that god had given even to saul, saul. now in that wise when we are dealing with god when he gives an instruction, when he says go, you go. When he says wait, you wait. When he says otherwise, you do. So we cannot say in my finances, I would eat to God's instruction. But when it comes to my health, no, I would not do this. No, God does not partake in those kind of lives. God wants full obedience. Why? Because obedience gives us freedom into his presence. You know, it's just like your son and you as a father. You give him an instruction, he quickly, you know, go about the instruction and does it well. You'll be encouraged and you want to do more for him. But if you send him something or probably you give him, an, give him an instruction and he doesn't do it well, even as an earthly father, you will not be happy with him, not to not talk of our heavenly father. And one thing is that before that thing is done, before you, you know, fulfill the instruction to do the obligation that God had given unto you, he, knew, he knows your capacity. He knows mm. you are able to do it before mm. he asks you to do, it. to do it. You know, when Jesus was going to come into Jerusalem and the Bible says he sent his disciples, he said, go to the city that is over and against you. You will see a court there tied. He said, untie it and bring it to me. But he told them, why? Because he has seen ahead. He told them, while untying the court, you will be asked. People will question you. People that were in charge of that court will question you. They will ask you, why are you untying this court? He said, tell them that the master has need of it. That's to tell you that when God gives you an instruction, he already knows the outcome. It's, it's just a test for you to obey it. And once you obey it, whatever blessing that is attached to that instruction is given to you. Many at times we use this our small brain to, to, to rate God. The Bible says, his ways are not our ways. Neither is thought thoughts, our thoughts. thoughts. He said, for the heaven is higher than the earth. So are his ways and thoughts higher than ours. So sometimes I think about it that God has given us this small brain so that we can deal with some little, little things, you know, that has to do with the affairs of life. But there are some times that he asks us to do some ridiculous things and he brings about the miraculous. Mm. You know, Luke, uh, John chapter 9, the Bible says he spat on the floor and he made the clay out of it, put it in the eyes of that man and he said, go and wash in river. See, That's a stupid thing. To it do. was. <laughs> but Eventually, as the man was going, he began to see that was instruction and he was obedient. So this rock thing is based on the fact that he had given you an instruction. Do it this way. Everything that Noah did on that hack was based on instruction. Okay, because of time, well, yes, I know there's so much more coming exactly. from where that's coming from. Um, because of time, you were talking about the um, rock. You had certain things to talk about. Yes, the yes, rock. yes. We'd like you to because time is okay. running out right now. Now, for yes. the rock, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2, 
Okay. It says, there is none only as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Now, one of the attributes is that there is none like him. The rock that we are talking about, nobody can be compared to him. He doesn't have another. He is alone. The so there is nothing that you can build upon that can look like that rock except Jesus. Yes. Number okay. two, he is our fortress, strength, and great deliverer. Okay. That rock that we are seated firmly upon. According to Psalms chapter 18 verse, uh, verse 2, the Lord is my rock. Psalm 18 and verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. That's to tell you in that place, according to that Psalm 18 verse 2, that is our fortress, is our strength, and great deliverer. You know, so no matter what you build upon him, the rock is able to withstand it. Mm. No matter how heavy, no matter mm. the situation, no matter the circumstances. Thirdly, he is perfect, he is truthful, and is just and right. Is that perfect, is perfect, is perfect, is truthful, truthful is just, just and, and right. right. That is the rock that we are seated upon. So when there is a problem, that rock does not disappoint you. Mm -hmm. When you need to be communicated to, to be given direction, it tells you the truth. How do I know this? Deuteronomy 32 verse 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Mm. Wouldn't you rather want to build on the truth, are not lies. The Bible called the devil the father of lies. Mm. He brings a package so beautiful on the outside, but the inside is rotten. Mm. But this God that we're talking about, this rock that we're talking about, inside it is beautiful. Outside is beautiful. beautiful. So you, can, you, you, you cannot but build your life upon this. Again, it's our salvation. It's our defense. And it's our stability. Mm. Sometimes situations of life could bring about instability. But this rock gives us stability. How do I know? Psalm 62 and verse 2. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. All right. Our, our time is far spent. All right. At this point, we have to go on a short break. That's and right. And please do know, when we come back, the phone line will be open so you can call in to ask pastor your questions and also to make your contributions. A short break. We'll be right back. International Center. I believe that what you see and hear here will rouse your faith and your life will never remain the same. Challenge God using what you see here as a point of contact to your miracle. Welcome back at Still Springs of Life. We thank God for his blessing us today. Um, we've really had a wonderful time in God's presence. Of course, it's still ongoing. Uh, we'll be looking at the topic, Build on the Rock. And God has used his son tremendously to bless us. Talking about Pastor Adibi Adewale, a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Um, please do know that the phone line will be open in the next two minutes because we just want to touch a few things before we open the lines. And also, 
please remember to turn on the volume of your TV before making your call. That's very important so that we can hear you crisp and clear. And finally, connect with us on our social media platforms on Twitter at Dove TV, like us on Facebook, Dove Television, and also visit our website on www.dovevision.org. Thank you, sir, for still staying with us. Thank yes. You. So building on the rock, we'd like to just say a few things before we start picking up. All right. Now, calls. You know, yes. Okay, building on the rock, you know, we're actually talking, we're still talking about the, the instruction. The rock. Okay. And the rock, based yes. on the instruction based on the rock, because okay. it was via instruction and express um, um, words that Jesus gave that actually brought about these two types of people. Okay. You know, and I was talking about um, Noah, that God gave him an instruction and it was to the letter to the mm. nails it was meant to use, to the dimensions, to the type of wood. So when God gives instruction, it's always very detailed. Mm. So people would not want to use, you know, I didn't hear God well as a yardstick not to fulfilling or doing the right thing that God has asked them to do. He gives instructions expressly. expressly. And um, I was trying to also talk about um, the rock, what it means also. You, okay. know, you know, finally, he leads and guides that rock. Lead, lead and guide. And yeah. Guide. Psalm 31 verse 1 to 3. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thy ear unto me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, thy namesake, lead me and guide me. So the rock leads and it guides. Guide. There's a difference between leading and being guided. You understand now? Okay. Yes. You know, God does not okay. only lead, He guides. Mm. God does not only lead you to where you are going. He doesn't just lead you to your destination. He guides. If you look at the story of the Israelites, He didn't just leave them to go. He guided them both in the day and in the night. Mm. So that is one of the things that the rock does. And it is everlasting. The Bible says, Isaiah 26 verse 4, Trust confidently in the Lord forever. He is your fortress, your shield, your banner. For the Lord God is an everlasting rock, the rock of ages. So okay. that tells us that that rock also is everlasting. Everlasting. Oh, it's right. everlasting. No matter what comes, God remains. All right. Th th thank you very much, sir. Please yes, sir. do know the phone line is open right now. Mm. Please call in to ask Pastor your questions and also to make your contributions. The topic still remains build on the rock. On the rock All right. Yeah. As we expect the calls will proceed okay uh, initially when you started the program you talked about you said you didn't want to delve into geology mm -hmm. uh, maybe we could just hear one thing <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. eventually actually did. you did yes you know, yeah, because you did. i was talking about it the rock as it were being an aggregate of different minerals yes you know and then we have them metamorphic we have them you know three different igneous. types of them like that igneous and co uh, yes. you know so that tells sedimentary. you that yep. okay. sedimentary thank you yes, you must have done geology back no, in school I, 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 I thank god i can actually remember those things because All right. it's not like a part of me right now exactly but okay. you know sometimes most of these things actually formulate some of our belief or probably makes us believe more in the things that we read in the scriptures mm -hmm. you know because these things are real there are things that we can feel there are things that we can touch you know for somebody that wants to now say okay based on what we have read in the scriptures, let me practicalize it. Let me build two houses. Let me build one on the sand. Let me build one on the rock. And let okay. there be flood. Let there be rain. Let's see what will happen. It is so evident yeah. that definitely the one that is built on the rock is going to last. Last. Okay, we have a call right, right now. Sir. Let's take this one. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where are you calling from? Okay, please do call us back. Remember to turn on the volume of your TV and before making your calls. We are having a wonderful time here. Talking about build on the rock. We'll take this call. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where you're calling from? Hello. Yes, we can uh, hear you. Please watch your name and where you're calling from. I'm from Bonica. All right, what's your name? Monica. Yes, what's your name? My, my name is Paul Ivetica. Okay, um, Paul, yeah. yes, how is Onicha yeah. doing and how are you doing too? Very fine. Uh, Okay. I the topic of the build on the rock. Build on the rock, yes. That's the topic for today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the topic is a very good topic. Yeah. So I, I give you more knowledge to look unto Jesus and do what is what is raising you all the door of my life. Okay. And exactly um, uh, to walk according to, to the purpose of God in this end time. Because you know this, this end time many things are happening. Yes. But 
lives on the wrong. Mm. And we living the life that giving glory to God. Mm. I think the God will guide you and lead you see, to the to this yes this end time. Yes. That is my okay. contribution. Thank you, Paul, for calling in. God bless you. He, made, you, he mentioned the lead and guide, and guide. in this end time. So mm. if, if you are built on the rock, mm. then you are going to the storm that is to come, rapture, mm -hmm. great tribulation, God sees you through. Exactly. That was what I was able to pick. Exactly. Please, let's take this call. All right. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where you're calling from? Hello. Okay, we lost that call. Please do call us back. Please do call us back. We'll take this one. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where are you calling from? My, my name is Omo Bolandi. All right. My Omo Bolandi, please, can you turn down the... My name is Omo Bolandi. Please, can you turn down the volume of your TV, please? Okay, please remember, it's important. You don't want to call. <laughs> now, please do know that lots of people are calling at the same time. So when your call goes through, that's a privilege. And you don't want to blow that. You don't want to actually blow that up. <laughs> so please make sure you turn it down so that you can pass that info, um, message across. Thank you. And we anticipate hearing from you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Now, you know, we're talking about... Um, being led and being guided. Okay. You know, according to that scripture that we read, you know, Psalm 31 and verse 1 to 3. Psalm you know, 31, 31 1 to verse 3. 1 to 3. Yes, sir. Yeah. That talks about, you know, the last part of it. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. You know, okay. so when God leads you, you know that he leads you rightly. God okay. does not make mistakes. Wow. And when he guides you, that means he's guiding you against every form of external forces that might want to contend with your destiny, your life, that might mm. want to contend with what you have built on him. So God is the protector of whatever thing that is built on him. You know, God is just like a shareholder in what you have built. And okay. when you are a shareholder in all these things, and you protect you, you your you interests protect with everything that you have. <laughs> you protect your interests. Why? Because God doesn't want it down. And God doesn't want it to be that, you know, there's a portion in the Bible that talks about, you know, a man that wants to build a tower, you know, that reaches the heaven. He say, if he will not first sit down and count the cost, cost, saying that he has enough to build it, lest when he doesn't have enough, people now come around and mock, mock him. him. You cannot mock what is built on the rock. Mm. God, will not God won't that. even allow he that. Won't allow okay, it. I have personal experiences. Okay. I have just time would not permit me to All share. Right. <laughs> All right. We'll take this call. Right. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Yes. Good, we, good, morning. good day. Please watch your name and where are you calling from? My name is Jasper. I'm calling from Nigeria. Sorry, please come again and please speak more audibly. We'd we'll like to hear you clearly. My name is Jasper. I'm calling from Enugu. All right, Jasper from Enugu. How are you doing, Jasper? I'm fine. I'm oh, fine. All right. Do you have a question or a contribution? Yeah. Um, there's this understanding has about okay something I learned. From the church, someone actually told me that okay, since we are now in Christ, that Christ is building in us, like uh, from the foundation up to a certain level that Christ wants to take you to, like He's building in us. So, but then now we are talking about building in Christ. So, I want to know the difference between these two, uh, these two systems. Okay. The okay, listen how Christ to is in you or how you can build in Christ. All right, please listen to Pastor as he responds. Yes, I believe you got that. No, um, so, well, he was trained when he gave mm. life to Christ that um, you, Christ builds in you. Now we are talking about you building on Christ. Okay. So he wants all, to, all right. Yes, now, the, the, the foundation, you know, what we are concerned with really is the foundation. Okay. Foundation is the rock and that is Christ. Now, Christ it's, himself definitely wants our growth. You understand? Yes. You know, the Bible says, you know, the Bible was talking about this in John chapter 14 when he was talking about, he said that I am the true vine. My father is the husband man, man. and ye are the branches. Now, the husband man, which is God, takes care of the vine. Now, the vine does not bear fruit, but the branches does, which is we. Okay. And the things that we need to bear this fruit is given to us from the vine, the nutrients. Now, so there is no way that you will be built on Christ, that Christ will not impact on you. Mm. There's no way that Christ will not be seen in you. There's no way that the things that, you know, what you built upon will not be seen as an impact on what is built upon that rock. So okay. the, 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 the value 
of what you have built upon will be seen on what is being built. So it's a mutual thing. Mm, you are I, built I, I on love the that choice of words. Yes, it's a mutual choice. thing. So Christ will not just leave you without maintaining you, without increasing you, without blessing you, so that when people see what is built on the rock, at least they will take time to look at it that this is actually built on the rock. When, when you use the word mutual, yes. I, I, it brings um, to our notice, God does something, you are expected to do something. God exactly. told Abraham, um, that um, sacrifice your son, your son yeah. it was his duty to take Isaac exactly and do the so it's like there's responsibility exactly. laid on us exactly for okay. what to do God has done something then we are meant to do something we are meant return. to do something exactly return. okay you know wow. you know you know right. this, okay. this comes to mind there are expectations that God wants from us at some point in time okay. you know just last Sunday I was reading where the Bible says God said to Moses go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go that they may worship me. The essence of letting them go, God loves to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. So at some point in time in our lives, we should always think about what we are giving back to him. Because he had given us the foundation. Mm. So we have to do something. We have to do something okay. also. We'll so take, we'll it take was this call now, Yeah, okay, go ahead. Thank sir. you very much, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where are you calling from? Oh, my name is Chris from Abuja. Very clean and clear. Chris, thank you for calling. Um, how are you doing? I'm trying. Okay. Do you have a question or a contribution? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Pastor is listening to you. Go ahead. Okay. My question is this. Pastor made the mention of... Uh, yes. I'm trying. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Okay. Proceed uh, with your question. Pastor made mention of... It's something like... Uh, uh, building on rock is all about trusting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you there? Yes, we, yeah. we can hear you. Uh, it's trusting. Trusting God. So now, my question is, how do we develop that trust? All right. Okay. Beautiful question. All right, please listen how to Pastor. How do we develop that trust in God? All right, please listen to Pastor as he responds. Thank you, Chris. God bless you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. The Bible says, he that must come to him must believe that he is and is the rewarder of those that diligently seek, seek him. him. Now, he said, when we seek the Lord early, we will find him. Now, mm -hmm. what makes you come to God in the first place is your belief in him. Now, how would you come to God having disbelief in your mind? How would you come to God not having the faith? He said, trust in the Lord with the all of your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And it will direct your path. So when it's, when, when it's acknowledged in your life, depending on, irrespective of what you are going through, submitting yourself to him, believing that he is and is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Once you seek him, the reason why you seek him is because you know that he can do all things. He can do and undo. So build your trust in him. That gives you a platform for you to operate freely with God. God is not a man that will fail. It is not a man that should lie. No, it's not a man that will repent. So God is not a God that does things on probability. If it happens like this, no problem. If it doesn't happen like this, no problem. God is word is yea and amen. amen. So put your old trust in him. Don't do doubts with God. You know, like I said before in the scriptures, an unstable man will not receive anything, anything of God. Of so what he has to do, Brother Paul, if I can still remember his name, is that he needs to put his faith into action. He needs to buy that Based on what God does for you, then gradually you for forever surrender your life to Him, and you know that definitely God cannot lie. All right, but thank you. Immutable things was possible for God to lie. Th thank you very much. Uh, hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where are you calling from? Okay, we lost that call. Please do call us back. Um, we'll love to hear what you have to say. We'll take this one. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where are you calling hello. from? Yes, we can hear you. Good day. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Joshua. I'm calling from Calabar. All right, Joshua, how are you doing? I'm cool. I'm very good. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this program. And I believe <laughs> this program is for me, especially. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory, so, to, glory to God. Because when I was in my room, just thinking about my life and my future and about the promises of God upon my life, when we need to manifest, so... And I was just thinking, and God just gave me something that the principle of his right time is obedience. Mm. Mm. That was something God gave me. So, in other sense, because 
Waiting unto God is an obedience which he requires of you before his right time to manifestation. So when I heard that word, I was kind of excited. <laughs> and I, I, was, I was listening to this music. The one man just asked me to turn it to dove. So when I turned it to the dove, and the topic here was, I, I was kind of, what is happening to me? <laughs> and when the man of God was saying, all what he was saying, he was, he was just talking about obedience, obedience. And that thing mm. just reminded me, that was what I told you. So I wanted to say, I'm very much happy. I want, to oh. speak more. I, want to, I want to learn more. Glory to God. All right. Act, my spirit is actually lifted. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling. God Thank bless you, you tremendously. God bless you. Um, all right. Yes. Just um, just listen to Pastor as he shares a bit. In a bit. Hello? Are you there? Okay. Pastor will share a bit right now based on what you just said. Listen to him right now. Okay. My brother, God bless you. I know that you are not the only one listening to this. I know there are many people that want to actually contribute or probably tell us what they feel presently, but you are just opportune to call in. Now, I want to encourage you. You see, God's words are always very timely. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that word had come to us at this point in time for us to use, you know, for us to better our lives in terms of obedience and in terms of instruction given to us. So I, I want to encourage you and I want to um, tell you that God is on your side and whatever Amen. you lay your hands on definitely shall prosper Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless my brother. Amen. God, God bless, bless you tremendously. Thank you so much. Wow, he's a pastor in the making. Wow, yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> because that was like a revelation. Mm. Obedience is, I don't know how you put it again, mm. but that was like a revelation. Mm. All right, mm. please do call us. We, we can still pick one more call. Mm. Yes, um, okay, we'll take this last call for the day. Hello, you're on to Springs of Life. Your name and where you're calling from? My name is Ephraim. I'm calling from Calabar. All righty. Oh, Calabar again. Okay, today is Calabar Day. <laughs> <laughs> Ephraim, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Do you have a question or a contribution? I have a question. Okay, Pastor okay. is listening to you. Make it fast. Okay, sir. Um, Pastor just said before that, the last call, I said when that it is faith you have before you come to God. You trust God before you come to Him. You believe in Him before you come to Him. Now, I want to say, if you have a health challenge, for example, and you have prayed for God to heal you or take it away, and it doesn't happen, why? Why is it so? Are there okay. Promises, promises, promises in the Bible that guarantee that when we call Him, He will answer. When you have prayed, you have done a lot. You have fasted, even you have. And the, the, the health challenge is still there. Why, why is it so? It doesn't go. Oh, all right, please listen to Pastor as okay. he responds. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you, my brother. Yes, God bless you. I'll be very Amen. brief. Now, um, whatever God does is to glorify himself. Mm. God does not do things because he wants to do it. He does it because he wants to glorify himself. Okay. He said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor has come. Yea, oh, the set, set time, time has come. There are always set time that we glorify his name. That God wants to do something in your life. The man that was at the pool of Bethsaida for 38 years. Imagine that number of years. It was just by one contact with Jesus that eventually everything that he has lost, he was alone. People left him. That all that was wrong with him eventually was, you know, he was restored. So my brother, I want you to keep on the faith. And I know that God will meet with you, not tomorrow, Amen. today, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever trouble is ended today, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have faith. Don't let your faith be wavered for any reason. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You Amen. talked about that when it started. Um, I mean, when the program started, you talked mm. about challenges. Yes. Um, at times, God doesn't step in immediately exactly. because there are certain things he wants us to experience mm -hmm. and possibly learn. I believe that's what that's that true. message exactly. was all about. Exactly. So, um, some people are saying, God, your word says he sent his word and mm. healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Mm. Why is that not happening in my life? Mm. But that so, does not disqualify all that God has said. Mm. You know, his word is here and amen. And none of his word that is spoken out of his mouth will go back to him void. void. Like you have said, they are timely. Sometimes there is always a message in the mess of our lives. 
God might be trying to pass across <laughs> a message to you. Mm. You're like, God, what I'm seeing is a mess. Everywhere is a mess. But it's a message. There's a still mm. small voice that God wants to pass across to you. You know, the afflictions that we have now is not for life. It's God trying to bring out the best in us. Yes. Sometimes if you have not experienced something before, you might not be in the right state to advise me when I mm. fall into that type of situation. True, true. But you are going through it because of some situations, because of some people, because mm. of some circumstances that may arise on the way. So you can say, yes, I've been there. And I knew uh, what it feels like. And that calms the storm. And that calms that person down. Yeah. So our, our time is fast. That's yes, very sir. fine. That's very okay, fine. Okay, please. <laughs> oh, I wish we had more time exactly. to share. I'm having a wonderful... I'm enjoying myself. Oh, bless God. And I believe that's what it's supposed to be. Exactly. All so. right. Uh, but, um, we just have a few minutes left. Okay. Uh, please, we would like to use this opportunity um, to call on those who would like to build on the rock. Mm. Um, please, just briefly, um, an altar call, please. Okay, yes, sir. sir. Um, it's very good, like we have said, that everyone builds on the rock. Why? Because it's everlasting. If you are out there and you have listened to these messages and you are like, why or when would I give my life to Christ? Tomorrow may be too late. Wherever you are, just bow your head and let us pray. Hallelujah. Lord God Almighty, I want to thank you for this once. Thank you, I Jesus. I ask, oh Lord, that as they have listened to this word and they have heeded to this word by wanting to give their lives to you and they have made up their mind at this point in time, Father, please, Bring them to your fold in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let their lives not remain the same again. Amen. And let your name be glorified in their lives. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. A Amen. Amen. amen Thank amen. you so much, welcome, sir, for sir. blessing us today. Thank you very much. I've been having me. a wonderful time. I too, we'll myself. do a post-broadcast. <laughs> It is well. <laughs> All right, God will bless you in return. Amen. I bless and you too. You will forever remain on the rock. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And to you watching, you will forever remain on the rock in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for calling. Um, thank you for watching. And to those who um, called and their numbers didn't go through, somehow, some way, we want to say thank you for dialing the number. God will minister to you yourself in the mighty name of jesus and to the camera crew my producer and everyone who's made springs of life a success we want to say a big 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 thank you please do stay tuned to dove tv for more exciting programs i am token ball lady have a wonderful time in god's presence god bless you thank you one more time sir for blessing us so we really really had 